I've never known a love so steady Even gold won't turn your tide We flow together like an ocean Every low and every high And I would have you anyway that can mean a lot of different things. The foundation of what I do is centered around Chinese medicine. And then on top of that, I also incorporate massage, myofascial release, um, tea touch, a little Masterson, um, some positive reinforcement, uh, you, Reiki, um, I'm certified the third level Reiki. So um, I do incorporate a lot of Reiki as well. Um, so I, my mission is to be of service to the horses and their guardians. And my work is an effort to create harmony for both the horse and their guardian. And the way I go about doing that is through the body work and the energy work that I do. And um, that's kind of it in a nutshell. <laughs> so I love my deeper understanding now of how important the body is. I Something that I didn't really understand before and understanding why the body piece of, you know, horse training for me and my clients' relationships with their horses is so much more significant. When I looked at it in the beginning training, it was just like, I need to get this part here, this part here, and this is what it's supposed to look like. How do we get the picture to look mm -hmm. like that? How do I help the person look like that? But now for you, explain to me what you feel like you're doing when you're releasing that tension from them like my 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 understanding as of now is when I see imbalances it's bigger than just the physical body isn't doing what it's supposed to be doing and I, I'm just curious to um, hear your idea of what the tension is mm -hmm. and what that piece is sure um, so I should back up a little bit because there's kind of um, more of a foundation in what I do that's a, even a little deeper. Uh, when I first started doing this work, and I'm new to this work, so I, I've been doing this work now for about five years, a little over. Um, but when I started doing this work, I knew that my ideal client was not going to come to me asking to take 10 seconds off their barrel racer. Um, my ideal client was looking for a deeper connection with their horse and themselves. And that that relationship between the guardian and their horse um, and that connection that they have is way beyond how the horse performs, how the horse behaves. Um, it's a much deeper connection. So going into this, I knew that's where I wanted to be of service. So um, with that being said, then when I come to work on a horse for the first time, um, I look at it like layers of an onion, similar to the way um, I have evolved myself as a human being on this earth. Um, so I look at the outermost layer. Um, I have long conversations with the guardians about the horse's personality. How are they like now at 14 compared to the way they were at three or four or five? Um, what are their idiosyncrasies? What, what are their personalities? Where, um, where are they bracing both physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually? Um, and how is uh, the mirror between the guardian and the horse, how is that reflecting to each other? So 
having that big picture before I even put my hands on the horse um, is super important to me. And then when I actually see the horse and uh, am with the horse for the first time, I like to watch them move, uh, you know, straight lines, lunging, walk, trot, canter. Um, I take pictures. I look at uh, posture. I'm looking at confirmation. How are they holding themselves? Um, where is their natural stance? We all have kind of this natural way we hold ourselves. You know, if you're talking to someone, do you naturally tip your head to the right or to the left? Um, do you tend to, you know, cock one hip? It's the same thing for the horse. So I'm looking at um, ease. And that is a little different than what I think you hear a lot of other people talking about with horses. And as you mentioned, sometimes if there's a problem, let's say with the right stifle, as, as a predator, as a human, we are conditioned in a very linear way of looking at things. We really zero in and narrow our focus. And so it's, it's very normal for us to focus in on what's wrong, where's the issue. And so we would zero in on that stifle and, you know, maybe expand a little bit around it. Um, and a lot of our um, allopathic medical care, veterinary care for horses is also more reductionist that way. So we're looking at the pieces and we're trying to sift through and get to that piece that's broken. And it's also a very me mechanistic way of looking at bodies, whether it's a human body or a horse body. And my perspective is it's a whole being. Um, I I, everything I do is about the whole horse, mind, body, spirit, emotions. And so if there is an issue with the stifle, to me, that's a symptom. Mm -hmm. That's, that's, I probably would say 90% of the time, that's a symptom. It's not the root cause. And so I'll use that as a data point and I'll kind of hold that in the back of my mind. Um, and then I'm looking for patterns. So when I'm watching the horse move, I'm looking for patterns throughout the whole entire body. Um, and so these are all kind of pieces to a puzzle that I'm starting to construct from the outside. So I've got kind of this, these outside edges that are coming together. And yes, there's a stifle issue. Um, yes, he, you know, likes to drop on the left lead a little bit. And then I put my hands on the horse. And for me, when I start to put my hands on the horse, um, that's when I'm really starting to listen. And it took me a while when I first started um, doing this professionally, I had to warn people in advance that I, I don't like to talk a lot in my sessions with the horses. Um, I had been mentored and followed a lot of uh, body workers who are really good at multitasking and can do work on a horse and catch up with the guardian, you know, at the same time and say hi to people in the barn. And I, I can't, I'm just not skilled that way to do it. And it's just not who I am. So as soon as I get my hands on the horse, um, unless it's something that I'm really, um, propelled to say to the, the guardian, my connection with the horse, that's why I'm there. And so then I start this listening process, which is feeling, I'm feeling tactily with my hands, with my heart, with my hara. 
um, in uh, Reiki Chinese medicine, the Hara or the Dantian is a very important part of our work. Um, I'm listening with my ears, with my eyes, and then I'm starting to pull things together. So that's kind of how it starts. Did I answer your question? Yes, I love it because okay. I feel like people do separate people being me for the first very large portion of my career separate and all of those things from the mechanical side of my horse doesn't look right he's lame and I feel the same way as you is if there's a lameness showing it's because there's a deeper thing going on sometimes it's emotional sometimes you know sometimes it is physical but I feel like the weakness in the physical body sometimes comes from a break in the uh, weakness in the emotional side of maybe not mm -hmm. feeling safe, so they feel tense to protect themselves. And then that chronic space of being tense to protect themselves then creates a weakness in the physical body, which creates um, injury, you know? So there's so many questions I have now from you talking that I'm so excited to talk to you. Um, speaking <laughs> to the Hara, what does that be like? Talk a little bit more about that. So for me, when I'm working a horse for the first time, like I have a new horse in training and I try to describe to people when I watch the horse go around, being able to teach people how to intuitively almost find where the tension is being held, where there's trauma being stored, where the energy is blocked. And I feel like I struggle with that piece. I'm like, well, like, can you, you can kind of feel it in your body. You know, you can kind of, so I, I'd love to hear your perspective and your experience of what you experience when you're, you know, looking at a horse for the mm -hmm. first part. And then there's something, and I'd love for you to talk more about the Hara and um, mm -hmm. speak to that a little bit. Okay. So again, I'll say as humans, we're not wired that way. We're yeah. not we're not brought up that way. Everything about our life, our educational system, everything, we are conditioned and trained to look at the smallest denominator, to zoom in. Uh, you know, think about our ancestors who would be hunting and they were hunting with bow and arrows, right? And so everything, um, we are conditioned to view the world. Um, in a very linear way. And so you really have to train yourself. I had to train myself. Um, and, and I should say that um, I've been training myself for many years prior to now focusing on work with the horses. I just didn't know that what I was doing beforehand was going to serve me so well here with the horses. So someone who is, um, you know, has a connection to a horse and really wants to further that connection so that they can um, assist the horse, whether it's with muscle tension or emotional tension or trauma, I think um, the best thing you could do is to take away your strongest sense, which is your vision. Mm -hmm. And um, it's tricky because we're all trained when you're around a horse, you have to be, you know, eyes on, be ready to react at any moment. And yet our eyes can trick us right into creating stress and brace and tension in our own body that then gets into this whole crazy mix with the horse. So um, a lot of uh, training uh, with animal Reiki um, and I went through a really beautiful animal Reiki training with the animal Reiki source, Kathleen Prasad's animal Reiki source, and I would highly recommend it. It's, it's a beautiful training and she um, encourages people to keep their eyes open, especially if you're working around horses. But um, 
she helps people understand how to maintain a soft gaze. And so um, a soft gaze would be um, practicing with your peripheral vision. So I can look at you on the screen and kind of, I'm almost zoning you out, but I'm becoming aware of this peripheral part of my vision around me. And so I'm not zooming in on you. I, my eyes are soft, my gaze is soft, but I can take in all this information. I don't know if you can see my hands, all this information way out here. Yeah, I'm doing and it. So, <laughs> yeah. And so, um, and, and it's, it's how horses see, right? Except they can see way back here and, you know, all around. So practicing this soft uh, gaze, this soft look, working on your peripheral vision so that if something were to happen, you can still react and be safe because safety is super important. Um, and yet you're not zooming in on all the bad things. Um, and so I think practicing that really helps. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then when you're in a safe area, so let's say you step outside of the round pen, so you're safe. If the horse comes up, you, you won't be injured. Then you could look down at the ground or close your eyes or just you know, look softly at the ground and start to feel more of what's going on in your body grounding your feet, breathing into your hara, your dantian, slowing your breathing down. I have not met anyone, nobody, who couldn't use that okay. <laughs> in this world right now. I mean, even, I mean, I, I work in this and I have to remind myself all the time. I catch myself, you know, breathing up here versus breathing lower. So the more you practice it, um, you will not be perfect. Human beings are not perfect entities. We're not machines, right? We're these beautiful creatures. And so what you're trying to do is uh, remind yourself and you're trying to be more aware of what's happening in your own body. And so that when something is off, like you're breathing, you can become aware of it sooner, sooner than your horse does, which is hard to do, but it's worth the effort to try. Um, what are, do you want me to talk any more about the, oops, sorry. Oh, sorry. Um, I was just going to say, what are your particular practices that you do that help keep you um, aware and keeping, I, cause I love that when I have clients here and stuff and I get to share with them um, that, oh, this thing happened to me and I was so triggered and mm -hmm. then I had to process and they're like, no, you always seem so calm. Like you always seem like everything, mm -hmm. you know, you teach this stuff. And I'm like, I'm very disciplined about the things I do now so that the awareness piece is there so I can catch it quicker. But I love that mm -hmm. when people share the piece of when they're doing the work that, no, I'm still a human being and I, the stuff still happens to me, but mm -hmm. the awareness is there. And then the toolbox that you have to dip into when stuff gets big for you is something that mm -hmm. I feel like it's important for people to understand and that it's not because we're special it's because we're disciplined about it and we know the importance of it right no totally a thousand percent and um and i'll say too before i jump into that i think that's why people have a misunderstanding about um horses picking up on energy and emotions because somebody can look totally calm and yet the horse is reacting and they're reacting not because of how the horse is seeing the person on the outside 
but they're reacting because there's no congruency between how the person is on the outside and what's actually happening on the inside. And so my horses, so I have two rescue horses here on our property. Every animal we have here on the property is a rescue. Two rescue cats, two rescue dogs, two rescue horses. And they all have their own beautiful quirks and trauma that's embedded. And the horses do too. And um, the one horse that is my greatest teacher is my thoroughbred, Romeo. Um, I'll tell you a story real, just real quick, because I think it will help people understand maybe. Um, so I was volunteering while I was going through my training at this rescue. And um, the wonderful woman who had um, been fostering all these amazing um, rescue horses, was um, getting to the age where she just couldn't do it by herself. She was uh, single, she was doing this for many, many years. And so she was starting to offload um, to other rescues or to other fosters, a lot of her herd. And there were two particular horses at her place that every time I got to work on them, um, I just felt this deep, deep connection. And I remember coming home after one um, time there and I told my husband in tears that she was gonna be um, sending these two along with several other away um, to a place about six hours from here. And he's like, well, no, we'll just, we'll take them. And we had, we had just purchased our property out in the country, but we didn't have anything ready for horses. We didn't have stalls in the barn. We, nothing was ready. Um, and so um, she, it turns out that uh, when I called her and said that I wanted to take them, she's like, oh, I'm sorry, but I already committed Romeo, the thoroughbred to go with this the rest of the herd, but copper, um, yeah, you could, you could definitely adopt him. And I was so happy when she said I could adopt copper, but I was so devastated. I mean, just like totally heartbroken that Romy was going to go with the rest of this herd. And so one of my practices, um, I tend to be more along the lines of uh, Buddhist practice in my personal life. But um, one of my practices is to just um, release the outcome. And if it's meant to be, my intention was to be of service to Romeo and Copper. And if, if it's the universe, God, Allah, however you wanna call it, if that's supposed to happen, if I'm supposed to be the person who's of service to them, and um, then it'll work out. Mm -hmm. And if not, then it just wasn't meant to be. And I've tried to live my life that way for the last 20 years. Uh, and so um, we proceeded to put our stuff together and build the barn and blah, 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 and get everything ready. And um, then I heard from a friend that there were some issues with some of the horses that went to this location. So I called the foster mom and she's like, yeah, Romeo's coming back. Oh, they didn't God. want him. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> so, so I got my Romeo and my copper. So Romeo, long story is my greatest teacher. Um, in Chinese medicine, um, uh, we look at uh, kind of your, your confirmation. And Romeo is a wood horse. And um, wood horses are, um, a lot of horses in rescues are wood. Think about what happens in spring. Spring is the wood phase in Chinese medicine. And in the wood phase of Chinese medicine, these tiny little seeds 
through huge forces are having to burst through the crust of the earth in order to grow. And so wood horses are powerful and they have to move and they're opinionated and they're kind of the warriors of the horse herd. They're, um, they're super powerful and he is this wood horse. And I, my, so my confirmation is I'm um, earth and I'm water. Um, and I tend to be soft and quiet and receptive and he's powerful, young, I'm yin. And so for me, um, he, he lets me know right away if I'm not congruent. And so he'll let me know with um, a pin of the ear or he'll turn around and he'll look at me. If I'm really not congruent or I'm not paying attention or um, so for instance, um, we've had a lot of snow and so we've had a lot of outdoor work and it can kind of be exhausting. And a, a lot of times I'll come in from doing outdoor stuff into the barn and I won't reground myself. And so even for me, if I don't think about my feet in contact with the ground and connect my breathing to my hara and then my heart and then to my third eye, um, he will let me know. Um, and he, he's a biter. <laughs> and so when he turns around and nips at me, um, it's his way of saying, whoa, that, you know, you got to think about what you just did. That was just not appropriate <laughs> at all. And so it's, um, it's this dance, right, of him showing me, teaching me how to be so aware of who I am in every moment. Um, so I'm with him. I'm grounded. Um, you know, I, he doesn't like getting blankets put on. So we have this whole process of doing that. If I'm really connected, it goes wonderfully. If I'm scattered or I've got a client in an hour and in the back of my head, I'm thinking, am I going to make it? And I'm way, I'm, I'm out an hour from now thinking about this client. It's, he's going to show me that I'm, I'm not present. And so it's, it's a constant for me. Yeah, that's so good. I feel like that's, um, it's so significant for so many people. And I love that you brought in, uh, I was at an event at the end of 2019 and they talked a lot about, um, Chinese medicine and, and identifying your personality mm -hmm. and um, elements you. And so I love that you're doing that with the horses. Cause it's something that like never occurred to me <laughs> until this moment. Oh gosh. But it's no, like, why would it be different? Mm -hmm. Yeah, no. Oh, and so, God, and, God. and that's one of the things when I'm first interviewing the client and I'm looking at the big picture, I'm, the first pieces to the puzzle for me are what's the constitution? Mm -hmm. Now, um, like humans, we can pile on lots of armor over the years, just like horses, right? They, um, especially if they've been in a lot of trauma and there's some learned helplessness. So, if I'm getting the sense that there's learned helplessness or a lot of trauma, then the constitution that they're showing me is, um, is their armor. It's not probably their true constitution the way they were when they were young. And mm -hmm. just because of how we, you know, sell and everything with horses, there aren't a lot of people that have had the same horse for their whole life. 
um, when that happened, it's really, it's really fun because the owner can then look back and see, okay, how were they when they were young? Were they quiet and reserved and shy? Were they the loner? Or were they like Romeo who had to be the first out into the pasture running around like crazy? Um, so understanding that is super helpful and understanding the constitution of the guardian is super helpful because again, there, you know, there are constitutions that, um, you know, are a little bit like this. And so it takes a little more understanding and learning in order for that to work. But when it does, it's really beautiful because everybody grows from it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's so good. It, and the whole talk around that piece was identifying what you were and what like your child was or your spouse was mm -hmm. and how you better communicate because you could understand from an empathetic point why their viewpoint was this way or why they responded mm -hmm. this way and learning on how to like mesh with that. So I think that's super cool um, that you bring that yeah. in. I love, I've never heard of anyone doing that. That's really cool. So one thing to keep in mind is that there are five elements mm -hmm. and um, it's five pieces of a pie mm -hmm. and everybody has all five. Mm -hmm. So it's just where, where, it, where are you most naturally residing? So, mm -hmm. you know, I might be more earth um, with water, almost equal. Um, I'm very little fire and very little wood. And yet, interestingly, my husband is very wood. Mm -hmm. And so there's always these interactions where you do have to, you know, keep that in mind. Um, but when I need to, right, I can pull up that that wood energy um, it's easier to do in the spring mm -hmm. right we all get kind of spring fever so there's this natural wood energy that everybody feels the horses feel everybody feels this wood energy there's also this really natural water energy that we feel in winter time where it gets dark it's the time where we need to go within and be quiet and drink warm fluids, teas. Um, it's not the time to be super out there in the world. It's more reflective. And you do that so that you have reserves so that when spring comes, you it's like the seed. The seed has reserves to be able to spring forth into the world. And so if, if you don't take care of that, that water phase, mm -hmm. then it's harder in the spring. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I feel like this year I've really felt that at a much deeper level. And I don't know if it's just, um, my age where I'm at or the world, the way that it is, <laughs> but mm -hmm. I also feel yeah. that my clients are really, in that place too, at a deep level, like, and I don't know if it's because I'm have guided them there, or this is just what's happening for the collective, but it's, everyone is doing really deep internal work. Um, horses are really, really strongly <laughs> showing up in a way where they're saying, you got, you got to take a look at yourself. Like we're not even mm -hmm. going to dance around this anymore. Like right now, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. Now. And, um, and so, yeah, I, I really, really feel that 100% right now is that everyone is so much in internal and diving in and really looking at what they want, you know, to bring forth into the spring and what they want mm -hmm. to grow and kind of eliminating the things yep. that aren't serving them anymore. It's very cool. Right. right. Mm -hmm. So if, if anyone is interested in learning more about the five phases. If you go to my website, mm -hmm. um, I have um, blogs and it will go through each phase. 
Um, and then through each phase, um, I give little pointers on what you can do during that phase to support your horse, but also what you can do to support yourself. And so it's just a nice little primer if you're interested in learning more. Oh, fun. Yeah, I was going to ask you, where do we learn more about this? <laughs> so good. So, yeah. So the other thing, um, so one of the other things that just started for me new this year um, is being an associate instructor for one of my favorite teachers um, of Chinese medicine, Susan Tenney with Elemental Acupressure. If you just Google Elemental Acupressure, um, she will pop up, but she has... Um, she has a ton of free content mm -hmm. on Facebook, on Instagram. Um, I mean, her Facebook, she just so much free content. So if this is something that's piquing your interest, mm -hmm. um, it would be a great place to start. She, her, the focus of her work, her work and her business is the five elements of Chinese medicine, which is a slightly different take on Chinese medicine than let's say the traditional Chinese medicine, um, which is what I originally studied through tall grass. Um, but it's, I love it. It's beautiful. Yeah. I love being able to grab anything that's different that might resonate with someone in that moment for them to kind of mm -hmm. take and see things differently. Um, my question is that I've been asking so my, my own two horses, I've had their entire lives. I've had my one since he was unhandled and I got him um, untouched out of the pasture. They're both very well-bred cow horses. Um, and I got him when he was almost a year and I got his sister with her mom and then we weaned mm -hmm. them into her mom. And so I've had them their entire lives. Um, and I went through a Theta training and I had our Theta instructor come here, me and one other person. And um, I was like, you just do a session with our horses, like just do a session on us and let our horse be out there. And my one horse, I invested a lot of time and a lot of um, focus on like, I'm going to show like this finally, after all these years, I have this horse that I get to go do what I'm passionate about. And, and uh, we were out there and she was, was like, Oh, what did you want to do with him? And I told her, and she was like, you know, he's actually saying he's here for your spiritual growth, not for showing. And I was like, mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay, well, can I grow spiritually and show him at the same time? Because <laughs> like, what? No. and ironically, we are not weird. Very shortly after that, he came up incredibly lame and um, we found a bunch of cysts on his navicular bone. And, um, and basically he was mm -hmm. like, you can't go ride this horse hard or, you know, he's only, he was really young when we found those and, you know, he's going to break down. He'll be crippled. There's, you know, it's a genetic thing. And so I was like, okay, well, we did all the medications and things and nothing really helped. And I um, was going to take him on this up to Truckee, which is a little bit North from us on this very long trail ride. And he, the days before he came up really lame. And I was like, hmm. I can't take him. He's sore. And um, the vet had come out and he had said, well, we can inject him when you get back, just stick him on a bunch of butte for now. You're not going to make it worse, get him comfortable, take him. And when you come back, we'll do this. And so I said, okay, fine. So um, throw him in the trailer. We go up there and I'm trying to give him butte and he won't eat it. And I'm like, great. Now, now I'm up here <laughs> for four days with this horse. It's going to be dead lame. And I was with my friend and we were sitting out there watching them, this beautiful BLM land. And it's just like super gorgeous. And I'm like, and she's like, you have to promise him you're not going to show him. And I was like, <laughs> okay, like, okay, sure. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, he, and I'm up there and I'm like, I am not going to show him. I'm, I'm telling him I'm not going to show him. And um, the next morning, everyone's getting ready to ride. And I, you know, pull him out and I'm like, I'll just check him. And I can't even explain what happened, but the horse has been dead sound ever since. And the only thing we do is mm -hmm. special shooting. I never had him injected. He's not on any medication. I definitely don't x-ray him because I don't want to see <laughs> so long as he's mm -hmm. sound. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So I don't know if you've had those types of experiences where things like that, that don't seem normal and don't make sense, but are because of the line of work you do. Mm -hmm. 
Um, I like to all the time. Yeah. I like to expand people's minds and go beyond what they've been conditioned as children to believe is, is, and isn't. And I've recently rejected the word normal because I feel like it's so restrictive. Mm -hmm. And so I have a few of those stories, but I want, I wanted to, you know, hear from you if you've had those experiences strictly because of the line of work you're in. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it happens all the time, all the time. And, um, not every guardian who calls me for body work wants all of this, mm -hmm. right? They <laughs> want me to come and check their horse because of a bad stifle or, you know, whatever. Their pole is tight. So for me, it's a process. I there are times where what I know deep in my heart, what's going on, that I can be of service to the horse while I'm there. And then in between, I'm offering seeds for the guardian to see how open are they about looking at not only the the injury or the issue with the horse but their relationship with the horse are they open to doing that in a different way mm -hmm. and some people are and some people will come along a little ways with me and then you know then there's a, a, a point where they just need to be here for now um, and I appreciate any anywhere on that journey um, because any growth on that journey is going to help both the guardian and the horse. Um, I have um, a few clients where I can do the whole thing mm -hmm. and they're super open minded. And there are, there's a, a volunteer facility that I'm able to do basically anything with the horses. And so we talk a lot about this, um, this exact thing, because mm -hmm. if, if you, not meaning you, but if the person, the guardian, the owner, caretaker, um, sees the horse, as a machine, a machine who's going to get me to whatever level of dressage or barrel racing or, or even just trail riding. And it's like a car. If they're thinking of the horse like a car, that's going to take me from where I am right now to some point out there. Um, that horse as a sentient being, again, this is just my, mm -hmm. my view on the world. I see horses as sentient beings that need their own autonomy. Mm -hmm. it's, I get to do that with my horses, but that's not for everybody. Mm -hmm. So for instance, your story, um, you giving your horse autonomy to help you understand what he or she is on this earth for. Mm -hmm. And maybe it's not trail riding or showing. Mm -hmm. Maybe it is for something else. And so being curious, I know you said you are very curious person being curious about what that might be can um, can be such an expansive process and I think horses are these beautiful creatures that will help us learn so much about relationships and about ourselves mm -hmm. and allowing them autonomy is a beautiful way to start that. But yeah, it 
it, I, it happens all the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's, um, I mean, it's been two years and he's been sound and he has special shoes on, but you know, so there's only, <laughs> I mean, the only thing that changed and it was instantly. And I tell that story because I, mm -hmm. yeah, I want people to expand what they think is and what isn't, because I think there's mm -hmm. so much more than us as, you know, like you had said in the beginning, it's so very like, this is right. What's in front of us. And this is what it is. And right. I don't know about that. Um, yeah. So I, I actually use him and his sister for these mirror sessions that, you know, it's like a mm -hmm. almost client assisted learning um, that I'll do like twice a month and they're amazing at it. But um, yeah, I feel like I've been talking a lot about um, like a soul contract or soul agreement. Um, mm -hmm. how they come not only in people forms, but different dogs, cats, you know, horses mm -hmm. and how we each choose each other, um, you know, in this lifetime to bring forth that stuff that needs to heal. And um, by not looking a little deeper at that or, you know, trying to keep it separate, you're not really honoring what, you know, is to be looked at here in this lifetime. I'm curious if you have any thoughts on, on that piece. Mm -hmm. um, are you familiar with Carolyn Mace? Mm -mm. I'm going to write it down. Okay. Now. So I'll, <laughs> I'll have to send you the link. You will love her. Okay. Um, so years ago, um, um, there was an, there still is an organization called the Institute of Noetic Sciences, but years ago in the late eighties and early nineties, this shows how old I am. Um, they would have uh, conferences and I was a member um, and I um, first started to learn from Carolyn Mace, who is an extraordinary um, woman. She originally was a medical intuitive. Um, I don't, she doesn't do that work anymore because she's basically here to help the rest of us um, grow and expand. Um, but she, she talks a lot about uh, soul contracts and what they are and the power behind them. And um, she, she would definitely be someone that you would want um, to look into for sure. Yeah. 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 And I think, I think it's definitely, um, it, it's, I see it as, something that takes place regularly and that um, those contracts are part of our of our life as we incarnate here um, and it doesn't to me though it doesn't matter if anybody else believes that my role right is I want to um, help create harmony harmony in the horse harmony and the guardian and harmony between the two of them. And so for me, if, if the guardian is ready to talk about that, that's great. But to me, it, that's, that's not as important as helping them um, in the here and now and fi figure that piece out. The rest of it can come um, and they just may not be ready for it either, which is totally fine. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. You kind of just have to meet people where they're at at that level and, and do the best you can. Um, there was one more thing that I'm always curious about is the idea of like um, body mapping um, and mm -hmm. having certain beliefs, certain things tied into certain parts of our body. Is that something that you've ever seen mm -hmm. with horses? Like that there's any kind of pattern that goes with, or is that just Hmm. I've always wondered about that, but I so um, yes, I, you know, I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, I I do that a lot with me. Um, so Louise Hay, I'm sure you're familiar yeah. with Louise Hay, and um, so when that when I have physical issues that come up for me, I I will look at that, um, but I. 
I don't know about horses. You know, horses don't have that, you know, frontal lobe that um, allows them to strategize and manipulate and, you know, that kind of thing. So I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. That's a really interesting question that I'm, I'm not sure about. I will say that I often find that the human issue mirrors the horse issue mm. and vice versa. Okay. And so whether there's an attraction because of similar trauma Mm -hmm. um, and so the, the guardian falls in love with the horse uh, because of some energetic key that mm -hmm. feels familiar to mm -hmm. the, the guardian. Mm -hmm. um, and then it turns out that they have similar trauma experiences, which means they're holding body issues in a similar mm -hmm. way. Um, but I, I don't know about the but about the body mapping part, that's really interesting to me. I'll have to look into that a little bit more. If I find something, I'll, I'll send it your way. Yeah, I, I asked to several people and people are kind of like, I don't know. And I'm like, I, for some reason, it, it keeps popping up in my head. And I'm like, I'm just going to keep asking people. And maybe, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, yeah, I love absolutely everything that you um, are speaking of. And I love that there are so many people that I feel like it's becoming maybe because people are reaching for a deeper connection with themselves at this point, because everything is so much in disarray. Um, but that people are looking at their horses differently now. Um, and maybe I feel like too, just the way the world is, it's really trudging up people's deeper stuff and it's highlighting that stuff for them. And it's causing horses to also <laughs> get bigger in the, mm -hmm. in their, um, reflect back to the people. So it's, causing people to, or giving them opportunities to go, maybe there's something deeper that needs to be dealt with here. I say sometimes that mm -hmm. I feel like people will do it for their horses and dive into the work for their horses before they'll do it. Sometimes for their husbands and partners and families and themselves, they'll mm -hmm. always, well, it's affecting my horse. So now I wonder mm -hmm. what else could be done about this. Um, so mm -hmm. I'm so thankful for it the work that you're doing and then the, there's so many more people that are now seem like I don't know if it's because I'm paying attention more or it seems like there's more people kind of coming together and showing up like this for people and offering yeah well it's it's almost the law of attraction right so when you're resonating at a certain frequency and that's your vibration, which is a reflection of your beliefs and your behavior and how you care for your body, then you're going to attract other people at that same frequency in that same resonant tone. And so, of course, you're going to start seeing more people. It's like um, when you get a new car, and you get a new car and let's say it's a Subaru and all of a sudden you're driving, you're like, huh, I had no idea there were so many Subarus on the road. I've never seen so many Subarus. Well, it's the same thing. All of a sudden it's like, you're seeing all these people um, who are, who are resonating with you. And so I think that's, that's all the more reason why it's important for us to, take care of ourselves and to do our daily practices and, you know, ground ourselves and breathe and, you know, going back to that Hara. I mean, anytime I feel a little askew, um, my breath work and my energy work, um, my Hara, um, those are the first two things that I connect with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, perfect. Um, and I, again, just speaking to the importance of being disciplined about your default going to, I feel off and my default is no longer, I need a glass of wine. Who can I go to lunch with? <laughs> what can I look at at social media? It's, um, that shopping, <laughs> anything. <laughs> and it's so easy to right. do now, um, with electronics and stuff. It's right there for you. All of the, mm -hmm. all of the things, them, all of those 
difficult sensations out are right in the palm of your hand. <laughs> um, but mm -hmm. when you take on the discipline of those practices, those are your default. Like first it's like pause. Like I feel crazy mm -hmm. right now. And it's like, what do, it's, it's that pause. And then that decision of going, okay, what do I need to do right here? That's going to serve me better. Um, mm -hmm. And an opportunity for me to look at something that's imbalanced right now that I need to see. Then if I look away, then I miss that opportunity to um, get that. Right. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah, I love that. The default of that being there. Um, well, thank you so much for chatting with mm -hmm. us today. Do you You're have welcome. anything? Is there anything that you feel like came up that you wanted to say? I always check in to make sure that you guys feel complete. When you're yeah, you know, there is one thing that kind of popped in my head earlier on that um, mm -hmm. kind of fell away, um, and it it has to do with um, how we're reflecting back to the horses. So, for instance, um, in my work, right, I'm with the horse, I'm listening, I'm doing my stuff. Um, I, I'm always looking for the sense of ease. Mm. I'm not looking for the issue. I'm looking for the sense of ease. And I'm, I'm trying to help the horse find that sense of ease. And in the same way, when I'm talking to the guardian or the owner, um, I like to encourage the guardian and the owner to not always talk about the stuff that's wrong with the horse in front of the horse. I think we, te we tend to do that a lot. Like, you know, either he's, um, he's snotty today or she's so merry or his stifle again. And, you know, you see your horse walking down the aisle and you focus on the limp in the front right. And so when that happens, right, our energy changes. Our, um, our internal um, energy changes. So if our energy is changing because we see the limp, then of course the horse who's connected to us is going to be like, whoa, that, you know, their energy is going to change. So I, I really encourage everyone to look for the beauty in the horse, look for the ease, look for the stuff that's working. Pay attention to the stuff that's working. Pay attention to the softness and the relaxation when it's there and encourage that. And yes, pay, you've got to pay attention to where the issues are, but it doesn't have to always be just that. Right. Yeah, it's um, interesting because I talk a lot about language and mm -hmm. how when I always have someone, okay, describe your horse to me. And just speaking to the idea that our perspective is just, you know, us looking through our lens, right? So even our horse's behaviors and everything is more about us, I think, a lot of times than it is about what's actually going on for them until you're more aware and, um and I always try to explain to people that the words that you use are shaping the way that you feel about certain situations. And you have so much control over that. Um, and to be more aware of that when you're describing things that are happening with your horse and choose words that can create, you know, something that you can co-create together rather than you're trying to bump up against this horse. It's not doing what you want. Um, and so the language and, you know, I have a horse right now who, um, it's his sister. So apparently me and him have gotten to a certain place where we have an understanding. And so now we've moved on to her <laughs> where, um, there has been some unexplained -ness going on and it really correlates a lot with a process I'm going through and watching me mm -hmm. consciously knowing that that stuff happens now. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like I need to fix this. I need to let go of this stuff because look at her, you know, and it trudged up a lot of stuff like responsibility, like releasing responsibility for, um, you know, that for her and responsibility in a lot of other areas. And 
then kind of looking at, instead of just focusing on um, like what you said, I was staring at her left front, looking at her right hind and I'm like, oh my, I'm just obsessing over like, oh my gosh, like the, I'm doing it all mm-hmm. wrong. Like, I should have done this. I should have done this, you know? And as of, I think two days ago, it was really like, what am I supposed to be learning from this? What is it? You know, even doing shadow work with the big, big feelings I was having around her and her being uncomfortable and me not being able to do anything about it. And, um, and it was interesting because I had the vet out and he did nothing. I mean, uh, he had been out before we eliminated some things and all he did when he came out this last time was we did x-rays and, you know, and Mm -hmm. I seen now she has the same thing going on as her brother, but, uh, but short of that, it was this thing that happened for me where I went, okay, so now I'm, I'm going to release the idea that I can't show her because she's got the same thing going on. And mm-hmm. I, yesterday when she was out, I was, I had a group lesson. So she was just out in the pasture around moving around. And, um, and I was like, I'm not even going to pay attention. I just need to like stop. And we're riding around and she's tearing around the pasture, just like, you know, ripping around. And I'm like, oh, she's going to be so sore. And I'm like, no, well, later that day I'd come out and I was like, I'm just going to brought her in. It started raining. And I checked in the swelling underneath her stomach was gone. And then mm-hmm. her, she was much more sound in the front, even though she doesn't have the shoe on. And we we're, and I was like, like, is it because he didn't do anything? All we did was x-ray. Like there was no <laughs> anything. And it was the same thing with him. And she's not fully sound yet, but it just feels like that same process of, you know, um, of taking your attention off of everything that's going wrong and just focusing so hard on it. And then yeah. instead going, okay, I know what the solution is. I can put special shoes on her and she'll be fine. And I just mm-hmm. need to just relax about this. And then the next mm-hmm. thing I know, she's like trotting around in the pasture and I'm like, okay, yeah. <laughs> like the lessons just keep now, coming. <laughs> yeah. And they, they always will, right? There's, yeah. that's what life is. It's just, constant lessons but the thing the thing that I think is so funny and fascinating is that we as humans we live in this dichotomy right it's always black or white I'm gonna ride her or I'm not gonna ride her I'm gonna show her or I'm not gonna show her but there's there's so much gray in between and so um not being a good friend of mine years ago when I was going through a really rough time used to tell me soft hands Mm -hmm. and soft hands, meaning soft hands Mm -hmm. versus grasping. Oh, you know, this is the outcome that I want. And I, I have to get that versus soft hands being open to maybe that'll happen. Maybe it'll happen in a different time frame than what, my human brain wants maybe it still will happen but softening that that outcome based Mm -hmm. look at the world right yeah it's hard to do yeah and I feel like I've really in even in the last year been to be been in a place where I can embrace that at such a high level with relationships with people with friendships with you know career And then, so it's always like explaining to my clients, like those lessons aren't going to stop, you know, they're going to get bigger and they're going to ask you to release more and then they're going to get bigger. And so she is a horse that I wanted to breed and I wanted to show, and there's all these things attached to it. Um, And now I'm like, well, I can't breed her for sure because clearly it's a genetic thing. Um, So she was just the next level for me because that was one thing that I was like, okay, she's like a unicorn. She's got everything, Mm -hmm. you know, anyone can ride her, but she's also athletic, like, you know, and so I realized it's just another level of detachment that I was being asked to go. I'm like, why don't you like, you know, let you let go of all this other stuff and you're so fluid with it. But then there's this horse that I was like, her mm-hmm. <laughs> like, one. And so it was like, nope. I'm like, oh, <laughs> so, um, yeah, I love that, that metaphor of soft hands. I love that. I will definitely use that. It feels, um, that feels really good, um, for everyone, <laughs> but it's always that next mm-hmm. level. I'm like, nope, you can't have that either. You got to, well, maybe tighten your grip a little bit and maybe we'll give that to you. (laughs) Well, you may not be able to have that, but you might have something better. 
Right. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. It might be yeah. so much better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. What a good conversation. So many good things in this video. I love it. Um, well, so thank you for inviting me. Yes, I, I, um, I have this vision in my head of <laughs> in the years coming of having a event where everyone that does stuff like you and um, a more holistic approach, way more out of the box. And I think a regular expos hold for people. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. in my mind, I'm like, that's what I want. I want to create this where we bring all these people together and do an expo, but a whole different, <laughs> a whole different version of an expo that um, takes people a little bit deeper. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll have to, there are a, a lot of people out in the California area that I'll have to um, get you connected to. Um, yeah. And you yeah. may already know them, but I'll, I'll send you links so you oh, can yeah, kind of start reaching out to people. Yes, definitely. I would love that and appreciate okay. it. Well, thank you so much. I loved all oh, of it. Oh, thank you. Yes. If um, people want to find more about what you're doing now, programs you're offering, mm -hmm. anything like that, where can they find you? Um, so you can go to my website. It's uh, www.rdrequine.com, like Red Dog Ranch, rdrequine.com. I'm on Facebook, RDR Equine. I'm on Instagram, RDR Equine. If you want to learn a little bit more about acupressure and practice it on your horses for a variety of different symptoms. Um, I also have a YouTube channel, RDR Equine, or it might be Red Dog Ranch. I can't remember what it is now, but um, I have a point of the week that I'll put up. Um, and so I'll show you how to work that point on your horse and what it might benefit. Um, and if you have questions, um, I didn't talk a lot about my end of life work with horses, but if, you are going through some end of life work or anticipate that with your horse. I have some um, free uh, materials. You can email me. I'm happy to send those off. My email is sam at rdrequine.com. Oh, yeah, very cool. I would, I feel like that would, it's such a big thing, um, that decision and that space and time. So, yeah, I love that you're doing that work. I know that I had a dog that passed away, um, over the summer and I had somebody mm -hmm. that I could mm -hmm. reach out to that helped me with that. And it was mm -hmm. just, it was just a different level of understanding of her purpose and feeling like I was mm -hmm. making the decision. And so, mm -hmm. yeah, I love that you're doing that. And I would highly encourage anyone that is in that place to reach out because that was, that yeah. changed process for me like completely yeah it was really yeah uh, it was a game changer good I'm glad you did that yeah I, yeah I just don't even know if people understand that there is that support for them so I love that mm -hmm. I think people definitely yeah. need that. it's such a hard thing it is well, yeah thank you so thank much. you all right yeah, and, it's been so I'll wonderful put, yes I'll put all those links in the show notes for the channel and all and link it in okay. and, then, and then yeah so people will be able to find okay. you okay all right great thank you bye okay. amber bye